What's happening, buddy? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In a previous video, I focused on a crash course in Squarespace, focusing on mostly the design and the pages section. In this video, I want to focus on bringing an e-commerce aspect or a commerce section to your Squarespace website. If you're brand new to Squarespace, I do recommend watching that first video first, and I'll provide that with a description below. In this video, we're doing a crash course on e-commerce. So with that, I'm gonna head over to the e-commerce section. And in here, it tells me, hey, I have to do a whole bunch of things. I can bring it from Etsy, if I have questions. What I wanna do is I wanna first add a product for sale. I'm gonna set up my store. And I'm gonna add to this store what I want it to look like. For right now, I'm gonna keep it really clean. So I'm just gonna keep it this one for store number two. And what's gonna happen is in my main navigation, I'm now gonna have a store. And in this store, I'm just gonna call it store. There we go. So now I have a store. So what I can do in this section is I can add a product. Now these are all the default settings. So I'm gonna take them all out because to me, that's fine. Let's just say the simple one is great by me. So it'll show you what product you have in your store by default. Now I don't want this one. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them all out because as much as I love Squarespace, they seem to almost do so many defaults. Uh, sure, that gives me an error message. So let's add a product I think we have to do. So this one, I can either add a gift card, I can add a service, I can add a digital product, or for me, I wanna sell a candle. So I'm gonna say physical product. I'm gonna call this one or an, an organic candle. I'll say this organic candle is homemade and made from soy, from organic soy. There we go. Perfect. And the images, what I'm going to do is add an image. I'm going to go find that candle picture. And there's my candle photo. If you want more than one photograph for your product, all you have to do is click on the plus sign. If you want a custom block, you're also welcome to add it right here as well. I'm keeping mine really simple for this crash course. So the inventory is gonna be price. I'm gonna then say, you know what? I'm charging $19 for this product. And it's not gonna be on sale. Now here's the thing, for unlimited quantity, I'm gonna say yes, because a lot of products I'm gonna build on a Squarespace commerce page, I might have a limited product space, but to me, the users, I don't want to say limited if I know I can make multiple candles per se. Now here's the thing that's important. For this candle, I might want to have different scents or different variations to this candle right here. So the variance I can add, and so in this case, the color, I'm going to say, well, the first color or the color, let's add something new and say custom. I'm going to say scents not color. And this is going to say orange. We're going to add tropical. We will say cabin for like a forest smell. And I'm going to click on save. So what happens is that now the inventory has three products, orange, tropical, and cabin. Now, if we take a look at the inventory again, you'll notice this little infinity sign. The infinity sign indicates that I have an unlimited amount of products. If I want to change that, I can go into the product and now I have three options. I can change units to then not be unlimited, but have a limited quantity. If I, for example, have like, let's say I only made 10 candles of this cabin smell, like a rustic pine scent. And if not, I can go right back and hit back. If we come down the page, it'll say featured product you can have on your page if you want. I'm going to say save for right now and publish this physical product. Now keep in mind, if you have your website out to the public, when you say save and publish, it goes out to the world. If you want to save your draft, because let's say you're still working on the actual product, this is also an option for you as well. I'm going to say save and publish for right now. And now what I'm going to do is take out these spring bowls because those are going to drive me nuts. Or not. Maybe I'm never going to get rid of those pages. Let's try this again. 
there's my store. Perfect. So I have this candle right here, organic candle, $19 in the store. We're looking good. Also, when I refreshed my page, all the default products are now gone. So all I have is an organic candle sitting here in my shop. Now, also in this design that I'm missing my shopping cart icon because by default, this was not set up for e-commerce. So if I want to add something to this design in terms of the actual shopping cart icon, what I can do is I'm going to go back out of this section and I'll just go into the about page just for not focusing on the shopping cart. I'm going to go to edit. And what I want to do is edit my site header. And from here, I'm looking for the elements tab. And the elements give me the ability to add a shopping cart. So just like that, now I can add a shopping cart to my website since I now can purchase physical products. I can go back, get out of this, and say done. And now my shopping cart is set up right here. If we head back over to the commerce section, we've done the products for sale. Now we need a way to pay ourselves because by default, there's no way to transfer the money from Squarespace to our bank account. I'm gonna click on ways to get paid. Now, if you already have a PayPal account, that is awesome. You can connect to PayPal or Venmo if you already have this set up. My preferred methodology is Stripe and Stripe is a fantastic tool. What you'll wanna do first is head over to stripe.com. I'll pull this up right here. And what Stripe does is Stripe actually processes the payments. So think of this as like the checkout counter in terms of your local grocery store, but Stripe is the one that actually processes your credit cards along with PayPal. And if you already have Square, that's awesome. Like if you already have a physical store set up with Square, even better. In this case, what I recommend is I use Stripe for all of my business. And so what I'll do is I'll create a new account in Stripe and use this by setting up my bank account information and then having this ready to go. What happens is, is once I'm ready in the Stripe account, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna manage getting started with Stripe. If you already have your Stripe account, which I do recommend you setting up, you can type your email address in and get started with Stripe through Squarespace. I'm gonna close the Stripe sections, but what you'll have to do is connect to one of these three tools or to have the payment go through a third party processor. Again, it takes about five minutes to set up. Let's head out of this commerce section in terms of the payment. And I also need to set up a way to ship my products because in this case, I do have a candle. So I have to set up a physical shipping ability to send to my customers. What I can do is I can set up two things. The first is if I have a local store, I can arrange to set up pickup. So what I can do is add a pickup option and say, okay, my store is located in the Lower East Side shop. Here's the information. And if I type all this in, so I'm gonna say 124 Oak Street, and we'll say Oakland, California, 94004, making up the zip code. And this is my uh, store in Oakland, Oakland. Now that I have that, I can save this as a way to pick up an option by my store location in Oakland, California. Commerce, so again, I'm gonna choose how to ship my products. And in here, we've already set the pickup, but I wanna add shipping options. Now here's a various assortment of options. Keep in mind also when you do the carrier calculations by FedEx, UPS, USPS, that goes into the advanced tier of Commerce in terms of Squarespace. So there's kind of two levels. There's a base commerce price you pay and an advanced level of commerce that you pay. And these are calculated or in the advanced section of the commerce. It costs a little bit more, but if you're doing a lot of boxes, I do recommend this design. I also will usually go with the easier methodology. With my clients, I think about easier the better. In terms of candles, I can do it based upon weight. So what I can do is I can say US, PS flat rate shipping. And in here I can say zero to one pound is gonna cost, let's say $5. The next one, we're gonna do one pound, come on, to something else. There we go, make sure the plus sign. I'm gonna go one pound to two pounds is gonna be $10. And I can continue with this until I fill up enough 
areas to where my shipping costs agree with what I'm shipping. Now, for the record, I have no idea what the cost it takes to ship candles. So this could be accurate or this could not be accurate in full disclosure. With that though, I am gonna hit save and I'll keep the last one at two pounds plus at, let's add to $15. I think about a very expensive order. In this case, I'm gonna hit save and the shipping zones I'm gonna keep for right now since I'm not gonna worry about those. But I do have to add a country, I do actually have to add it. And I'm gonna say United States, 54 over 54. If you only ship to the normal US except for Hawaii or Alaska, then you do need to change the sections. In this case, this is just the US. I'm gonna hit save and now I have my different shipping options. Now if I try this page, so what I'm gonna do is I've already got in theory a way to get paid to ship my products. I don't need a subscription plan and I would publish this if I was gonna pay for this because right now it does tell me that I can get a new plan for this price. But I just wanna try this as a test case scenario. And if you ever wanna change your products or change your shipping, down here in this page, if you don't see it on this list right here in the future, you can head right down to shipping and you get the same page as well. Also, you can find your orders, your inventory on the left-hand side. And yes, there is a premium feature, which again, this is the case if I were to upgrade, I would actually have all the access to this, but my organic candle is right here. You can always go back and if I wanted to add more products, I can edit all. So I can add more products in this direction if I wanted to. But for right now, I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. I'm gonna click on save. And what I wanna do is I wanna test this and see how it's gonna work. So I'm gonna take my kind of funky crow fennel different URL structure. I'm gonna head over to Mr. Chrome. Let me close this for a second. And I'm gonna use the Chrome and the private browsing just to make sure it'll just test it on not my account. Oops, let's take off the word config and go into this one. I've got my super secret password. Now what I can do is head to the store I see my candle, I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna select the scent, I'm gonna choose tropical for this design, and after I choose tropical, I'm gonna choose the quantity of candles I want, I'm gonna say two for right now, and click on add to cart, and I added my two candles. I did test this prior, so I forgot to take out the other two, so I'm gonna drop mine from four to two, and check out, and see how this is working. Perfect, your email, now tax, I don't have any tax set up, so if you do have taxable areas in your region, you do wanna make sure you set up your appropriate sales tax. My shipping right now is $5. I'm gonna continue with my email address, so I'll type in mine. I'll use actually info at a designer who codes.com. And I don't need to sign up for news and events, so I'll click continue. And what I'll do is I'll say John Smith, and 14 Oak Street, let's just use Durant, Oklahoma. Awesome, so perfect, shipping to 74701. Again, you can set up your zones if you want to, and shipping is $5. And it'll just put a default number in for right now since I don't have the site really live working in that kind of way because I haven't actually set up the payments because I'm not paying for this e-commerce section right now. Hence why it gave me that kind of you to say 20% off if you pay for this. So until I actually pay for it, it's not really gonna work. And we'll use shipping address the same as right here. And I'm gonna say continue to see if this works. Again, John Smith doesn't exist and this credit card is just a totally fake, actual, <laughs> fake credit card. So I'm gonna say purchase. And yep, because I haven't set up the merchant payment so it will not go through at this time. Now here's the thing. If I had this all set up to go and I had my Stripe or PayPal selection set up, let me close down Chrome for a second and we go back into Safari. Actually, let me close Stripe while out as well. And let's go out of full screen that way. And if we go over to the Commerce section, once someone does order, you do get notified, but what you will also find is this section called Orders up in the top left section of Commerce. 
What will happen is it'll show you pending orders, fulfilled orders, and canceled orders. And what you can do is a pending orders if it just came through and I haven't actually shipped the product out to the individual, that one address in Oklahoma. The fulfilled orders are when the order gets fulfilled and it's off into the hands of the USPS. The canceled orders is let's say someone ordered like I just did two versus four candles. They didn't realize they ordered too many candles and they either cancel or change the order. So you can go in and cancel something in this direction. I always say, let the client be happy. And if they somehow made a mistake, just cancel it and go on because at least it'll make them happy versus saying no refunds. But that of course is up to you in terms of your business. If you are selling tickets, you might have a no refund policy. Just make sure you clarify that wherever you do this in your page. And once you get these pages and you actually click on subscribe, because right now I'm not paying for my plan. So if we look at these plans again, you're going to see a basic commerce and an advanced commerce section. The real big difference of the advanced versus basic, if we come down here, you can also sell subscriptions on the advanced plan. So if I had a candle, the month club, for example, I can also then sell subscriptions. The advanced shipping is where it comes down to the advanced shipping. So what it'll do is it'll automatically calculate real time rates for USPS, FedEx and UPS and control your shipping options at the zip code level in the US FSA level in Canada. So that means you can charge less if you're on a Western state, since I'm in theory shipping from Oakland, California, I could then charge less for Oakland and then more for Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, or DC, for example, as those zip codes are farther in the US. So it's up to you. You can also choose the basic, but I can't officially check out until I choose one of these options of these plans. So that's the basic of the Squarespace selling. Again, I can choose any kind of product, physical, digital service, or gift card. I just chose physical, so in that case, for me, I have to set up shipping zones and eventually you'll go in and set your taxes up because every state and country is different and I cannot speak to individual products. But at least wanted to show you a basic crash course of how you enter your products in. And oh, one more thing before I forget. I also want to go back to the navigation. If you want to move your store icon around or if you want to move the store right to the very front, all you have to do is drag this store icon around to the main navigation and it moves your store wherever you want it to be. The shopping cart sits on the far right by default and the last contact us sits on the far right as this template is built for that word contact. And that's how you get a successful store up and running using Squarespace.